Hey guys, uh, today's uh, vlog video is not going to really be um, vlog-like. Um, I had no idea what would be an appropriate title for this video and um, I just decided to add it to my vlogs. It's it's not going to be like a vlog at all really. I'm just going to be sitting here talking to you, updating you about some of the animals. I've uh, been off of social media for a while. This hasn't affected my channel because uh, what I do is I film my videos ahead of time and I get them uploaded usually at the beginning of the month and this is how I'm able to maintain um, a YouTube channel and then also care for all these animals is uh, I just you know do it ahead of time that way I spend time taking care of my animals and uh, the vlogs are really the only videos that I upload right away that you know that one's it's not ahead of time it's uh, you know as it happens and then I edit it and I upload it whereas the other ones I try to kind of do them all at once um, to get ahead. My last post on social media was that I, I posted a picture of Daisy um, saying that Daisy was ill and that she was getting treatment and that was uh, really the, the last um, time I was really on social media. Uh, Daisy passed away a few hours after that and in that time three other puppies became very ill and so did Petunia. Petunia also uh, Petunia the mini pig also got sick. This has been really hard on me. It's been really hard on, on me and Jaime and I don't want to talk about it. It's still very soon. Um, this happened on um, on on Wednesday uh, is when Daisy passed away. And so I don't really want to talk about it, but I know you guys are emotionally invested in this and it's only fair to you that I talk about what happened so that you know everything that's going on. Daisy seemed sick on Tuesday afternoon and she was acting very weird. I was worried that something was going on with her. So this is when she started getting veterinary care and we started her on IV hydration fluids. We were trying to figure out what was going on with her and then she had her first episode of diarrhea and there was no poop in it. It was only blood. Um, so we assumed she had parvo. Uh, she got a parvo test and the parvo test came out negative and she passed away Wednesday night. And that's it. Really, that's what happened. It was so fast. That's that's everything with her, really. Um, I felt so dazed and so confused. It felt like a really long time period during all of this, and I had to actually sit down and write down the times of when each thing happened. And it, all in all, in, in total, it was about 36 hours. Um, that's from when she seemed sick to when she passed away. It was... It was so fast how how it happened. It just, I can't believe how fast it happened. It wasn't even two days. She wasn't even sick for two days. She went from this happy, excited, super energetic little dog to dead in hours. The veterinarian believed that it was poison and I don't understand that. Like I, I don't know how that happened. I, I've looked all over my house. Um, we don't use poisons. We don't use poisons for pests. Um, she didn't have access to cleaning products. She uh, you know, didn't have any access to medications. I couldn't find anything in the house that would have caused this. And I looked everywhere outside too and I, I didn't find anything outside. Um, I don't know how that would have happened but I think it had to have been outside because if it was in the house, it is, I think we would be able to know somehow. Uh, so I believe that it was something she got outside. But I still just don't understand how. But um, at this point, it wasn't over. Uh, things kept getting pretty bad. I'm not sure if I've mentioned this, but Thor, Daisy's brother, uh, was adopted by my mom. And uh, he got sick just about the same time that Daisy did and he was also 
um, gave him veterinary care. We had him on IV hydration fluids and he did test positive for parvo and he was not as sick as Daisy but he was very dehydrated and he actually had to be hospitalized for three days but he was responsive the entire time and Daisy went from you know moving around to unresponsive very quickly um but with with Thor uh he was uh, very responsive the entire time I lost track of time when Daisy got sick it was confusing and just disorienting and I wasn't sleeping and I guess I wasn't eating either because at one point I couldn't remember the last time I had eaten and everything just seemed really blurry. The clinic was a 24 hour clinic, um, the, the veterinary clinic. So we were there at just all, all times, like all uh, morning, middle of the night, just um, there all the time. So I think that kind of just made the days confusing for me. And the next puppy that got sick was Bruce. Bruce tested positive for Parvo and he was hospitalized for one day. Thor was then released to go home and he's the one that um, was the worst. Parvo hit him the worst. I was panicking over Rowan getting sick. Um, Rowan is our runt. Uh, they're usually not as healthy. Um, they're usually, you know, a little bit weaker, weaker immune system and all of that. And I, I was, I was panicking over him getting sick, especially after what happened with Daisy. And I was so afraid that they were gonna all die. About six hours after we hospitalized Bruce, Rowan did get sick. He tested positive for Parvo and we had to take him into the clinic for treatment as well. And the shocking part here was that Rowan actually did really good. Um, he did not get very sick and the vet even let us take him home. He didn't have to be hospitalized. Uh, Rowan was able to get home treatment for the parvo. After this, Petunia became ill. She lost the use of her back legs and dogs can't give parvo to pigs. Um, so the scary thought was poison um, since that's what had happened with Daisy. And then I realized that Petunia had Dippity Pig Syndrome and it's it's really as silly as it sounds. Um, it is something that happens in pet mini pigs and it's brought on by stress and it's, it's um, nothing that's going to harm them long term. It's not caused by anything other than stress and they get over it within a few days and it has no lasting effects. They start not being able to use their hind legs. Uh, sometimes they can't even sit up. Sometimes if they can walk, they'll fall. Um, it's very terrifying because it looks like a spinal injury. And so that was, uh, I think my anxiety was already pretty high. So that was, that was like, you know, uh, more than I wanted to handle. Um, but I, I realized that that's what it had to be because Petunia was feeling the stress that was brought on to the house, um, to our home because of the dogs being sick. Uh, we were trying to care for all of the dogs without spreading the disease and um, having to come and go at all hours of the day and night and so because of this her daily routine was messed up and that was very upsetting to her. Um, pigs really like to have the same thing all the time and we would come and go out of the house like she was still getting her meals and everything like that just fine but because of our activity between me and Hyman and you know I guess moving around the house and coming and leaving in ways that we don't normally do that was very upsetting for her and that's why she actually um, had that syndrome. So then at 1 a.m. Um, Bruce was hospitalized, had been hospitalized for 24 hours so at that point um, they let us take him home and that's when I uh, went and picked him up. It was about 1 in the morning, discharged at about 2 in the morning and I was able to take him home and continue with home treatments uh, because he, he did still have parvo, but he was uh, doing better at that point. Over the next few days, Bruce and Rowan had to um, 
go in regularly for treatments. Um, a lot of treatments because they were being taken care of at home, but they still needed uh, their hydration and medications and injections and all of that. Um, and then Petunia over the next few days also got a lot better. Uh, now she is 100% better. She's doing really, really well. And uh, she's, you know, no more Dippity Pig Syndrome. I spent so much time at that 24 hour clinic. It felt like we were living there. Um, I uh, had the, the dogs, it was four dogs, you know, that we had taken in there. And it was um, four or five vets that were um, involved in their care. And I felt really comfortable with the care that they were receiving. I was very impressed with how the veterinarians handled everything. And just that that's comforting to me is just that those vets, um, they, they did such a good job and the technicians, and the receptionists, they, they did a wonderful job. I had a chance to speak with one of the vets that treated Daisy and without me asking, he said that the parvo test could have been wrong, um, but they're 95% accurate. And he seemed very doubtful. He did not believe that it was wrong. He didn't think Daisy had parvo. And now after, after having cared for three dogs that did test positive for parvo, I don't think that Daisy had parvo. Um, and at least uh, all of the vets agreed that if she did have parvo, parvo wasn't what killed her. Um, and, and usually with dogs, uh, dehydration is what kills them with parvo, but that's not what happened with her. She was treated right away and her symptoms were so different. Uh, things that were going on with Daisy were very different than th what I experienced with the other three dogs. It it was a, a very different thing, and I do believe that she was poisoned. I don't understand how, but um, I do think that that's what happened. It's just unimaginable. I I don't... <laughs> It's, it's hard to understand that, that Daisy's gone. Um, she was the, the liveliest of them. She was the craziest puppy in her litter. It's so full of life and energy. It's really hard to understand that she's gone. It's really hard to lose someone that was so full of life for them to suddenly not be here. And it happened so quickly with Daisy. I feel like she didn't even have a chance to fight this. I did everything that I could for her. I caught it right away. I got her treatment. At the end, she was intubated and put on a respirator. And when her when her heart stopped beating, uh, they gave her the team gave her CPR, and they did everything that they could for her. And I, I did. I did everything that I could for her and um, she she didn't make it, but at least we did do everything possible. And yeah, this has been emotionally draining, physically draining. It's been so hard to eat. It's like I went so long without eating that my stomach couldn't handle food again. It was, it was hard to eat afterwards. And it, it was thousands of dollars in vet bills. After four dogs, my vet bills uh, were huge. And just for clarity, just to be clear, um, even though Daisy didn't make it, it was thousands of dollars in vet bills um, because she did get so bad at the end. So even though she didn't make it, um, it, it was still, it, it's still a big expense. Um, but I don't regret any of that. I did everything I could to help her and I, I wouldn't regret spending any money on my dogs. That's not um, the important part to me. Um, I would spend whatever I could to make my dogs better and it, it, her not making it, at least I know that that wasn't anything that held me back. And at least I know I tried my best to help her, to get her help. I am grieving Daisy, but I am so happy and relieved to have Bruce and Rowan at home. They're both at home on um, 
they're, they're done with their parvo treatments now. Uh, they are still on medications, but they're better now. They're going to be okay. And it's such a relief too that Petunia is better as well. I'm trying to get back into work now. I'm trying to focus on happy tales, but it is going to be hard for me. Something that I want to say about parvo is don't risk it. Don't expose your dogs to parvo. Keep them at home until they are fully vaccinated. It's not worth it. It's not worth the risk. I always talk about how bad parvo is and I tried everything to keep my dogs from getting it. And even through all that effort, they still did get it. And it's it's just not worth the risk. So keep your dogs at home until they're fully vaccinated, which is um, generally around 14 to 16 weeks. Uh, don't don't take them to stores. Don't take them to parks. Don't take them on walks. Um, if you when you go to the vet clinic, don't let them you know run around on the floor. Don't let other people touch them. And that's, you know, one thing is when we were at the clinic, a lot of people would try to pet our puppies. And it, it's so incredibly stupid because if they're sick. You don't know why someone's at the vet clinic. Um, Rowan, honestly, he, he didn't look sick if you saw him. If you didn't know him and you saw him, he didn't look sick. So don't assume that a dog's not sick. Um, and what these people were doing is they were transferring you know the illness to healthy dogs now I didn't let people touch my dogs but I saw other parvo patients where they somebody would pet the dog and then go and pet other puppies as well and that's spreading the disease don't do that and because parvo is so contagious it spreads so easily the wind can bring it in um, a bird can can bring it into your yard, you can bring it into your house on your shoes. It's hard to, it's almost impossible to not spread it, but it is possible to be cautious. And why make it easier for your dogs to get this? It, I just, I don't understand why someone would even risk it. I don't understand taking, you know, 10 week old puppies to PetSmart where other dogs have been pooping and peeing and it's just, um, to just don't do it. Like I did everything right and it still happened to me and it's not worth the risk. Unfortunately, mine came into contact with this somehow before their last vaccine, it seems. And if anything, I hope people can realize just how contagious Parvo is. Thank you for watching this and thank you so much for your support when Daisy became ill. It really means a lot to me. And even though we lost her, because of your prayers, the rest of our animals got better. So thank you guys so much.